sometimes it's barely legible. So originals and copies and extracts is really a bit of a gain by them. It, 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 it doesn't alter the fact that if you uh, make sure that the document can be completely bound together and that requires you need to make a copy of what was sent to you to get it up to speed or get it onto a, a bigger page, doesn't matter, okay? Doesn't matter. Also, you mentioned, I'm trying to get caught up with all with the different audios that you have out there. Thankfully, there's not too many right now, and I'll be able to, you know, go through them all and, and grasp these principles. But you mentioned um, to register your trust, and I hadn't heard that concept yet on any of your audios. Uh, and the trust you're talking about evidently is formed from, um, from Eucadia. Is that correct? Well... Uh, yes, it is, but there's two parts to that. Firstly, um, the question is, um, do you have a trust? And secondly, how do you demonstrate you have a trust? So let's start with the first part. Um, when someone says at the moment, um, all this stuff about SESTA KV is wrong, I am my own, um, uh, you know, I'm a free man or I am... Um, uh, I have a relationship with the divine. The divine is the grantor. Um, I am the trustee. Really what they're trying to voice uh, is the very elements that has been created in both the canons as well as the covenant, Pactum de Singularis Calum, to say, yes, you are, you're correct. Uh, the Roman cult has no right to usurp the divine's intimate relationship with you. Now, the problem leaving it in the hands of each and every man and woman to try and express that in defense of the Roman cult is that without a legal argument, of course, you, you don't uh, rebut and you don't um, ultimately eliminate the world that they've created. So there was a need to come up with a superior argument, both literally lawfully and, and spiritually that rids us of these false presumptions. And that was done by being very clear that two trusts are created for you uh, from the time that you are conceived and that the Roman cult cannot touch them and that they are relationships between you and the divine which no one can step in and abrogate. And that comes under the notion of divine trust and true trust under Article 85 and Article 86. So if I go to Article 85, um, I find that a divine trust is uh, explained under Canon 1168. And if I go to Article 86, I find that the true trust explained to me in those uh, canons. And if I want to go to the definitions under the covenant, um, you can go to those sections. Now, the second part to that, I'm sorry, you, you've asked really good questions and I've just got to get through all this. The second part of that is the number. Okay, so this tells us that we have them, but how do we prove? Well, the, the number uh, is merely the membership number, which also is your trust number. Now, that is obtainable by um, uh, emailing um, One Heaven uh, at the moment. Ultimately, it will be something that you can do of your own accord without us stepping in, but administratively, we haven't streamlined the back end and that's a, that's a problem, I'm sorry. But yes, go to, if you, if you email the email addresses on One Heaven, I will make sure that um, uh, your request is directed. All you need to give is your full name, your born, your born day and your time and your membership number will be provided. Then when you get that, it's then a matter of that you start to behave as a trustee. And that's part of the challenge because we haven't behaved as a trustee. Now, I've given you one example, and in, in future talk shoes, I'd like to give you other examples. But I'll give you one example. I gave you one example of how your trust number can be used in the demonstration of competence. And that was in the role play I showed of when a judge says, what is your name? And I read out a number. I read out my trust number. Okay, so does that make sense on that question for you? Yes, it does. And does okay. everybody have the same trust number? Everyone has different um, trust numbers. Everyone has a different trust number. Okay. Absolutely. 
Yep. And it's also a unique piece of, of space time because it's a number that also is uniquely created on the Akkadian time system. Yeah? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. All right. And all the laws that I see, that the, the, the canon, are these laws that have been in existence, uh, you know, since the beginning of laws um, that, you, that you're rounding up and putting in one place? Your canon? Uh, the canons? That you have yeah, to... Yes, and I, I, you know, every, every question you ask and every answer I try and give is honest. The answer is yes and no, because the Roman cult hasn't been around for the beginning of time. But uh, many of the canons, yes, go back to the original um, principles of law before law was usurped. So going back to the laws of Hammurabi, going back to the commandments of Akhenaten, going back to uh, principles of law that have been round with the Druids, the Druvids, the Kulian, the Poly. Uh, not the corruptions that came out of Ur, but certainly going back to the principles that we know of um, back to the time of um, uh, um, beginnings of law and civilization. Now, the way to test the truth of that is to read them and then go out and validate what you read for yourself. Yeah? I'm not asking you to believe a single thing you read. Right. I might sound passionate, but I'm not asking anyone to believe me. I'm, I'm sharing information, and, and it's up to you to validate that between yourselves and for yourself. Because if you don't do that, then how can you be competent? Yeah? Yes, exactly. Great. And the okay. system does recognize these laws? The, um, why the do system. I need the system to recognize them? Well, um, when you go to court, or if you're dragged into court, and you, uh, for example, if you uh, bring up one of the um, commandments, um, are they obliged to honor and recognize that commandment? Well, they're a trustee of a tr of of they're they're sitting there, assuming to be like, for example, what, what what's your name for the moment? Sorry, I just missed it. Your first name. Oh, my first name, Sandy. Sandra? Yes. Okay. So you go in there. The judge is, is sitting there as you, as Sandra. You're the ghost. Yes. They're, they're holding legal title. You have equitable title. Yeah? Yes. If you think quoting commandments is going to get someone that's claiming legal title to um, dissolve a trust, then, then go right ahead. I don't think that would be particularly wise. Yeah? I mean, have you ever heard of judges in court saying, you know, sit down, I will do what I say? Or someone saying, Your Honour, I've read UCC and the procedure that you're following is, isn't listed here. And the judge says, this is my court. Have you heard that before? Yes. Is that not the behaviour of a trustee? Correct. Right? Yes. So you've got to work that one through. Yeah? I mean... Part of, part of how we're conditioned by them, and, and they do this deliberately, they've conditioned us to believe now that even if something rings true in our ears, we feel it in our hearts, that unless it has a gold star and a tick of approval, it can't be true. Yeah. Right? Yes? I agree. Okay. Now, if you doubt your instinct, then what ends up happening? You're not confident. Right. And if people come along and say, I have the gold star and I have the tick of approval and you must behave like a slave, then, and we say, okay, then what's happening? What do we end up being? What are we? Incompetent. Yeah? Do you know that the most, one of the most powerful uh, trainings in, in universities was the science of rhetoric, the science of argument? Well, can you learn rhetoric at any university today? Do you know of? Can you get a degree in rhetoric from a university today? That you've known of or heard of? No. Yeah. Right. Why? Because it's a threat. They don't want people to be able to argue. They don't want argument. Someone who argues is a terrorist. They want people to think like slaves. If you can't show me the gold star and the citation, it's not real. 
Mm. So don't even believe what your instinct tells you. Don't believe what your heart tells you. If it rings true and it doesn't have a gold star, you're mistaken. And that's how we live our lives. And quite frankly, that's how a lot of this misinformation has, has arised from this because people are saying, oh, it's bad, it's evil, it's not verified. But anyway, I hope I've answered your questions and I really appreciate your questions. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you, Sandra. Uh, next question we have. Uh, Eastern North Carolina, you unmuted. Did you have a question? Um, let me just go ahead and explain to everyone uh, at this moment. If you press star 8, you can be put in a question uh, queue and that way we can get to everybody's questions in order. Did East North Carolina that uh, is unmuted, did you have a question? Uh, Terry, this is Michael Joseph, are you talking about me? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Michael. Yeah. Hi, Michael Joseph. Hey, Frank. I just tell, wanted to tell you that I really appreciated this call, and that uh, I mean, just today we have um, experienced um, exactly what you're talking about in court, and we've we've experienced the judge as trustee, and uh, and the the young man uh, unwilling to be fiduciary, and and. Uh, unwilling to accept the office of trustee um, with phenomenal success. But um, I, my question that I had for you is that, let's say a man goes down and, and opens up a banking account in the name of Sesta KV and produces all the chattels, you know, the driver's license, social security number, and let's say um, passport or whatever they require these days to open up an account. And... From time to time, that man is fond of signing the front and backs of checks that are issued. My question is, does not, doesn't that show incompetence right there? Because isn't that man acting as trustee, and, and does he have capacity to act as trustee? Yeah. The, the, sorry, just, I just need to correct something there. It's executor, not trustee. Okay. So they never give us the role of trustee. If, you, if they ever gave us the role of trustee, I would be dissolving trust like a shot, right? It's sure. Executive. So you would just yeah. you'd drop that like a hot potato, right? Yeah, so yeah. By, it's, so it's, by it's agreement. the role, role of executor. Yeah. So then, so then um, the banking agreement establishes the role of executor, and you're executing the check on the front or the back, depending on the role of what you're doing there, correct? Yeah. Okay, yeah. But, but, but here, here's the good thing. Here's here's a good thing, and and it's and it's worth remembering this. They know this, and they hide this. Have you ever heard, Michael Joseph, the, the, the phrase, my word is my bond? Absolutely. Okay. That is an ancient... Here I am poo-pooing people who use scripture, but I'm about to do it myself. That's an ancient scriptural belief, understanding, right? Your word is your bond. Okay. Yeah. And what it comes down to is the, the fact that the law originates in sound vibration and that... Uh, Believe it or not, even though they, they class us as incompetent, in that competent vocalization of, of an intent. When I speak and I vibrate in oath or vow, that is a agreement. And everything else on paper is what's called memoriam. It's a memorandum. That is, it's a testament to or, or record of the agreement. Now, what they do <coughs> is they trick us. They write up the agreement first and then get us to agree word. Yeah? But there's two things about written and vocal that we need to bear in mind, and they know it and we need to know it. If you ever sign something in duress, then it has no legal basis. If you say something in duress, it has no legal basis. And if you raise that to them, at the appropriate time, then that is null and void. Now, I'll give an example, and, and then I'll, if you have another question, fire it after I give this answer, uh, or, or we'll keep going. But thanks for your question, Michael Joseph. So he, here we take that check example. To feed my family, to stay alive, and to survive the transition, there are things that I need to do. I need to pay bills, I need to write checks, I need to do things. The fact that I need to, or better still, I have to, is an example of duress. Now that I know the truth, now that I have seen the wisdom, the fact that I must still live in chains,